Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. And I hope to have this out just after Christmas. It's Christmas day today. Again, Merry Christmas to you all. Yep, I'm working on Christmas. That's right. So what happened the other day? Actually, let me back up. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining this, this awesome community. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for watching the video, liking the video, of course. Um, I hope to have this out before New Year's. If I don't, it'll be just after. I've got a little surprise for y'all. I got a little treat for y'all. A little year end review. It's coming, it's a, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress for sure. But why am I out here still? What's going on? You know, the, um, the other day, Winter Storm Elliott wreaked havoc on Kansas, Oklahoma, as well as, you know, so many other states. But as far as dropping down, kind of following that jet stream, getting Kansas and Oklahoma, I started to put fuel additive. I won't say what brand, because I don't want to want to get all in that. I put some stuff in it. And come on, truck. I think it's trying to do a regen. It's acting wonky. I put some stuff in it, the recommended amount, to pre-treat, start getting everything ready to go. And uh, that was the day before the storm was set to come in. The day of, I got to Hutchison, Kansas, loaded because the rack was empty. So I went ahead and loaded because it was still 32, 33 degrees. So I wanted to make sure and get that done before the temperatures got really crazy out there. Anyway, get loaded up and um, get over to the loves. Decide, okay, I'm gonna top my tanks off and I'm going to treat the crap out of this fuel. Make sure I don't gel up overnight. Well, I do all of that and I parked. And I, I'm gonna level with you. That may have been my mistake on the position that I had to park. Just a second here, I got a semi truck that's in the close lane and he's like, Kind of wanting to get over, but kind of not. FedEx. Sounds about right. Anyway, I'm going to try not to digress on this story so I can get it out of here. What happened to my truck? So, I parked facing east. And, of course, hardcore north wind showed up that night. And... I was kind of hoping somebody would park next to me. Nobody ever did. I sheltered the crap out of the truck to my right. Nobody sheltered me. Went to sleep. The truck is rocking from the wind. Storm's moving in. Lullabied me to sleep like a little baby. <laughs> and, uh... Sorry, it... I got a truck to my left, a truck in front of me. I'm not even going the speed limit yet, and I can't go yet. Okay. I promise I'll get this story out. I'm just trying to get on the interstate, get going, get in line here, getting, you know, getting the groove. So, truck took the brunt of all that wind. Now, I expected the, the anti-gel to work like it said it would, you know, to very, very cold temperatures. I'm not 100% certain if wind chill actually has a factor on diesel or not. The fuel filter completely gelled up, 
truck shut off about 7 o'clock in the morning. Woke me up. So, I get up, realize, okay, truck's off, whatever. Start throwing layers on, get my coat on. I already know what happened. I know I gelled up. Wind is still blowing at 30-something miles an hour. The wind chill, I think, was negative 35. Cold. Cold, cold. And what does any self-respecting truck driver do? No, no, they do not call a shop. <laughs> no. I open my hood. I got my tools out. I got some filters out, a filter out. And I replaced the fuel filter. I happen to have just a little splash of 911. Not enough to treat tanks. Not enough to treat the whole system. Just a splash. So I replaced the filter, put that splash of 911 in there, primed it, truck fired right up. Ran like a top. I'm thinking, great. 10 minutes of idling and running. Turn the heater back on, cold caps warm again. Mind you, this took an hour of me getting out of the truck, getting to the point where the ends of my fingers were numb, like hurting numb, getting back in the truck, to which there's no heat, but at least it's blocking from the wind. Get out of the truck, work for a couple more minutes, and get back in. Anyway, got the truck running. It's warmed up, I'm warmed up, I got everything I need ready to go, let's go. I start out past the fuel island on the right hand side. I make the left hand turn in between the store and the fuel island. The truck shuts off. DRT. Dead right there. Well, F, you know? So I realize the problem's a little bigger than I thought. Either the fuel is gelling up in the lines or it's gelling up at the filter again just because of it being exposed? I don't know. So, start making phone calls, other drivers, shop foreman, trying to figure out, like, what, what, what do we do now? Because I've done what I know to do, what do I need to do now? You know, of course, they all ask me, what, do you, what have you done so far? Put out an event last night, change fuel filter this morning, we're dead. What now? Well, continue to try to start it, it idles, and then it'll die. I gotta go inside and warm up, come back out, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wondering like, maybe I need to let this, this additive continue to cycle, because see, here's the thing, I put the additive in, but then parked. I literally put the additive in, topped off my tanks, pulled around because you got to come off the fuel island back through the parking lot and parked. That's where I sat. And so it never got stirred up. So I'm thinking, well, if I can just get it running, get it moving, you know what I mean? I'll get it stirred up. I could never keep running long enough. I could build a little bit of air pressure and move it four feet and then it died. I move it back a couple feet and died. I was trying to you know, I pull forward, hit the brakes, just trying to slosh that crap around in there. I'm trying everything. And, uh, shop foreman told me about a time where a couple years back, it was like even colder than it was the other day. And I, I don't know how the hell anybody dealt with the colder, colder than it was the other day, because it was colder than I've ever been. And he said, you know, um, one way that we got around the, the gelling was an old school trick from the 80s. I'm an 80s baby. I love old school tricks from the 80s. Because that's back when stuff worked. <laughs> that's back before all the government got involved and everything. Like, it may kill you, but it'll work. <laughs> so, I put five gallons of gasoline on each side. Now, before you say anything, let me just get through the process. I'm cold. I'm so cold. I'm not thinking 100% clearly. I took my empty jugs of additive and was taking them to the pump, using my debit card, getting as much
much gas as I can pack in them. Coming over and emptying them out. Go back in the store, warm up for five minutes. Go back out there, fill them up, come out, put them in the truck. Go back in the store for five minutes. It wasn't about the third trip of freezing my absolute you-know-what's off. I realized, I bet they got a gas can in there for sale. But now again, you're warm right now and you're thinking logically. I wasn't warm. There wasn't, wasn't all there, all right? There is such thing as brain freeze. Not, I wasn't like detrimental health brain freeze, but I, I wasn't 100% clear. Roll over right here. Yikes. Completely buckled that frame on that truck. Looked like the fifth wheel stayed attached to the trailer. I guess that's a good thing. Anyway, that was from the roads the other day. So, I get the gas can, I fill it up two gallon gas can because that way I can fit it in my side steps fill it up a couple more times because again I, I know what I've got in the tanks now with the little ones there's my wonderful bride but she told me to whenever I'm recording record I can call her back anyway I filled it up to five gallons like I was instructed and continued for hours coming out there turning the key on Start the truck, let it idle, and it died. Start the truck up, let it idle, it died. I'd do that for about 10 minutes to get to the point where I couldn't stand it anymore. I'd have to go back inside. Moral of the story is, 10 hours later, the tow truck finally rescues me. We parked the trailer there on the site. We spoke to the manager, of course, about it. Thank you so much, love. They, those people were the best. I sent an email to that management team thanking them for their hospitality, their patience, and their gratitude and graciousness for me. They were so kind, so sweet, offered me, you know, a bite to eat, just just were so, so hospitable. Loves is, is A1 golden in my book. Not just the one in Hutch, all of them. They're, they're super nice people. Their bathrooms are the cleanest around. Anyway. So they let me park my trailer, and the tow truck took uh, took me in the truck to Valley Center to a yard we have there. Put the truck in the shop, heated shop, grabbed a spare, went and grabbed my, my buggy, and went to bed. Ultimately came back to Valley Center and went to bed. It was late at that point. I was tired. I've been up all day dealing with this truck. You know, got up the next day, delivered the load, came back, trucks ready to go, Valley Center, knocked it out of the park. They placed my fuel filters. My fuel was plenty treated at this point. You know what I mean? I got five gallons of gas in each tank. This baby, this baby is hot. Like, it's ready to run. So I didn't need no more additive. There wasn't a concern about gelling in the tanks. That wasn't the concern anymore. It was just getting it through the fuel system. So they replaced the filters, charged up my batteries, put the drive line back in, then to drop and sew the truck, and off I went. And it's been running ever since. So yes, I've had to treat it again, and I, I don't know if I'm gonna have to treat it today. I think the lows tomorrow are reasonable enough that I don't think I'm gonna have to treat it anymore. I think I'll just put is the least amount of biodiesel I can find in it, which we have a couple of truck stops along I-35, which is a corridor we run mainly, that have no bio or very minimal. And so that's where we try to fuel up, is get the least amount of bio in the diesel as you can. If you don't know what bio is, look it up, Google it. I'm not gonna get on all that on this video. Now, what are we doing now? So, roundabout way of saying, that put us behind. Us, me. That put me behind. Didn't put the company behind. We're behind anyway. It's an emergency declaration for the state and for, it says a regional for the government. It's 45 states plus Washington, D.C. So there's a couple that aren't included there, but, you know, I, the ones all around me are in this emergency declaration for propane. And so we're going to be behind anyway. The great news with that is, uh, 
rules don't matter when it comes to hours of service. Now, when you're running the Oklahoma one, you're supposed to get eight hours of sleep, sorry, eight hours of rest in a 24 hour period. And so I parked last night at about 1.30. I got going. Uh, I got going after I had a trailer repair. I'll get to that. I got going this morning. I think I got about six and a half hours of downtime and rest. So I'll have to get another hour and a half before the day is done. Trust me, it won't be a problem getting that done. So, take a load down to Texas last night. Pulling this super wonky drive. I'll insert the video that I took with my cell phone here. I'm sorry if the quality sucks. I did it with my cell phone. It was cold. It was dark. Anyway, you'll see what I'm talking about. So what happened is the front axle on my spread was hanging a little bit because the drive came in like this and then did a dip. And my back axle was sitting on the elevated part and my front axle was left to kind of hang a little bit. And it just is what it is. I, I got as close as I could to the tank. Almost hitting the telephone pole as you can see. And then when it came time to back out of there, that dude's hanging. And I had to stand there waiting on enough traffic to go by to clear out for me to run back up to my truck and back out of there onto that highway, that 55 mile an hour highway in the dark. That's the sketchy crap you do as a propane hauler. It ain't all a propane. It's the situations you gotta put this truck in and then get it out of without tearing it up. Now I call taking or breaking a line that's smaller than my pinky. I mean, the, smaller than the size of a pin. Like the cartridge that goes in a pin, about that size. That's what I broke. It snapped the little plastic airline that runs from my tire inflation system for my trailer. And I had to go get that repaired this morning. I was stopped back there in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Thank you so much to the hands there that were there on Christmas Day to get me out of my, again, gloves, top notch, grade A, the way to go. So what are we doing now? Well, I'm headed up to Hutchinson, Kansas. I got a load that goes to Elk City, which is west of Oklahoma City. And they got another load out of Hutch, Kansas that goes to Locust Grove, Oklahoma. And that takes me home, but it's gonna be tomorrow. So here it is Christmas Day. It's gonna be tomorrow by the time I get out there. Yes, I have emergency declaration. I can go all day and all night. That's 15 hours of driving, plus approximately two and a half hours of unload, plus at least two hours of load time with the two loads. So you're talking, we're getting the neighborhood of 19, 20 hours now, and that's without food, and that's without fuel. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're all in that 20 hour point. You know what I mean? I, I'm sorry, I will run the wheels off this truck, but 20 hours is probably a stretch. So, anyway, that's what we're doing. That's how we're doing. My family, they understand. Trucking is trucking. Life happens. They're going to still get together, those that are able to make it through the, the weather. You know, the roads are great, but it's still cold. It's 25 degrees right now. Thankfully, there's like no wind. The wind is completely laid down, but it's still 25 degrees. I know that ain't. Minnesota cold, and I, I get it. That's Oklahoma cold. You know, I watched the thing on Miami. It was 41 degrees, and I'm thinking, 40 degrees? 40 degrees is a normal day in December here. Yeah, their normal average is 80. 80 right now. So think about wherever you live and subtract 40 degrees and tell me if it's cold or not. That's cold to them. You know, it's all relative to where you live. All relative to where you live. Anyway. Again, I wish y'all a very, very Merry Christmas. I'm going to keep this one short and sweet. I just wanted to get this out there, talk about the truck, talk about what happened, show y'all a couple of pictures and a couple of videos of, of kind of what went down and all that. But it's getting to the point where my family's starting to meet. You know, my wife's side of the family is meeting this morning. My side of the family is meeting this afternoon. And... 
I want to be available for phone calls and, you know, just, I want to be available for them. My wife's already called, you know, it's, they miss me, I miss them, and, uh, yeah, this is what we do. This is, this is what trucking is. Those of y'all that are thinking about getting into this business, understand, this isn't banker's hours. This ain't eight to five, Monday through Friday, weekends and holidays off. No, 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 no. That's not what this is. It's also not Acord forced me to stay out here and work. It ain't that either. I had loads dispatched to me. We've got families waiting on this propane. Could I have gone home kicking and screaming, possibly, whatever? I don't know. I don't even know if I'd have kicked and screamed. They'd have probably said, yeah, you know what? Go home for Christmas. But I said, I'm going to get these loads taken care of. You dispatch to me. I'll get home just as soon as I possibly can. So, there's that. I love my family. I love y'all to death. It's not that I'm putting my job first. I can promise you that. I love my wife and my kids, my extended family. I'm not putting my job first. But I do have a job to do, and I will get home and visit and spend the appropriate time with my family. So, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you tuning in. Again, like the channel or like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned for that year-end review. I, I hope you enjoy it. I think it'll be good. I, I chuckle at it when I take a look at it. So uh, I hope you like it too. Have a very, very, merry Christmas and a safe, happy new year. I hope to see you all again soon. Until then, keep between the mayonnaise and the mustard. Take care.